Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, uh, Sister Valerie. Thank you for that beautiful welcome. And uh, I also appreciate those greetings. Thank you. Thank you. I really feel welcome and I'm blessed by your enthusiasm and your energy in uh, facilitating this uh, program. Uh, may I just um, ask if I can be allowed to share my screen? Am I able to do that, Sister Valerie? Yes, uh, Pastor, you are able to do that. Amen, amen. Uh, let me just see if I can quickly do this. All right. Are you able to see my screen? It's uh, coming up. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to see it. It's opening up. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There we go. There we go. We can ah, see. Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, then, may I ask that uh, we just uh, begin with a word of prayer? Just Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful yet again for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer that was given to us by Sister Mpumi. Thank you, Lord, for having accepted and having answered our prayer. And we are so grateful, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you have given to now take full charge and full control of this program. Father, we continue to worship your name and to praise you for sustaining this uh, virtual prayer meeting. We pray that, Lord, may it continue to the glory of your name. May it grow into a very big movement, Lord, that will bring so many people from all over the world and, and bring them to your throne. And so this morning, I pray that uh, as we now continue looking at uh, the subject you impressed upon us, Father, open our our ears that we may be able to hear your word. For this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Um, this morning, we continue looking at um, created for good works. And um, for this morning, I would like to mention that um, there is a need that uh, we need to be prepared for us to undertake uh, the work that the Lord has actually called us for, or for us to step into our purpose. And so this morning we're looking at the need for preparation. And in particular, we are going to look at um, uh, Moses as uh, our case study for how the Lord actually prepares. And so just um, a few quick facts that you may wish to know about Moses is that number one, Moses was born at a time when male Hebrew babies were being killed by being cast into the river. When you read Exodus chapter one and verse 22, you know, the Bible will tell you that uh, the Pharaoh had made a decree that all the male Hebrew babies that were born uh, were supposed to be killed and, uh, you know, thrown into the river. Uh, this was the time at which uh, Moses is born, at a very difficult time, at a time when people are dying. But you are going to see that uh, despite being born at such a time, the Lord performed a very powerful miracle. Because as we continue reading, we will discover that um, when the baby Moses is born, when the baby Moses is born, um, you know, the mother keeps the baby for three months in the home. And after three months, she can no longer keep him. And so she decides to put him in a basket and, uh, you know, puts it in the river. And uh, she asks the, her daughter, the sister to Moses, uh, Miriam, you know, to spy on the basket as it kept uh, sailing on the river. And uh, as it made its way on the river, the Bible tells us that um, the, um, the, 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 the daughter to, to the pharaoh, uh, in fact, a relative to the, to the pharaoh, you know, sees the basket and uh, she gets it. And uh, miraculously, she chooses to save the baby. And as she looks around, she sees Miriam who was following the basket. And then 
she calls Miriam and gives her the basket and tells her, you know, take care of this baby. And Miriam takes the baby to the mother. And so according to, 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 to this woman, she feels, she feels that by doing so, she feels that uh, there is now a work that must be done, that is to take care of Moses. And so she, she even makes an arrangement that, um, that, um, that, 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 that Hebrew woman who happens to be the mother to Moses is actually going to be paid for taking care of this baby. And when I was reading this uh, you know, yesterday night, I was so blessed because this woman who has been employed to be uh, a servant, to take care of the baby Moses is actually the mother. And for taking care of her own baby, she is even being paid. And I realized that friends, we serve a mighty God. We serve a God who can turn situations around. You know, in the mind of, uh, in the, mind of the mother to Moses, Moses was lost, Moses was gone but she had no idea what God was going to do. He turns the situation around and uh, Moses is miraculously saved. And not only is Moses saved, but this woman actually, she even, you know, um, she, she, she begins to get a salary by simply taking care of her own child. Who does that, my friends? It's only God. And, 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 and I want you to consider the factor that Moses is born at a difficult time. And from this difficult time, the Lord performs a miracle. Allow me to just, uh, to just uh, digress a little bit and, and come on a small lay-by and indicate that you see in, in this life, there are situations that happen that are very difficult for us to process. There are situations that are very difficult for us to process. There are times when things will begin to fall out of place. And we may think that, um, you know, we, 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 we are not going anywhere. But from the experience of Moses, I would like to propose to us that, um, that even in the most difficult of situations, it is important to keep our focus on the Lord. It is important for us not to give up because we don't know how the Lord is going to work through you know, that difficult situation. Moses is born at a time when people have been killed and the natural thing is that Moses being male is going to die. But instead of dying, Moses is miraculously saved. And why is this happening? Moses has got a very special work to do. And so quickly after, after being kept by the mother uh, for 12 years, after being kept by the mother for 12 years, Moses is then surrendered into the palace of Egypt where he is raised as, as a prince. And uh, during this time that uh, he is being raised as a prince, the Lord actually reveals, uh, reveals a purpose. God reveals the, 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 the purpose to Moses as why he was preserved and, 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 and why you know, he had to undergo that miraculous salvation from death. When you read, when you read um, this very beautiful book, uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, you know, by, by Ellen White, um, she mentions, that is a uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 245, you know, she mentions that the elders of Israel were taught by angels that the time for their deliverance was near and that Moses was the man whom God would employ to accomplish this work. Angels instructed Moses also that Jehovah had chosen him to break the bondage of his people. So whilst Moses was being raised as a prince in the courts of Egypt, the Lord actually instructed him. He was told that he was born for the purpose of breaking the bondage of Israel. You will recall that at this time, Israel was in bondage in Egypt. And you will recall that uh, many years ago, the Lord had prophesied through Abraham that, uh, that uh, his children, referring to the children of Israel, would be in bondage for about 400 years. 
And so at this time, the 400 years was almost coming to an end. And those who had read that prophecy that God had given to, to Abraham, they were aware that at the end of the 400 years, they were supposed to be delivered. And so th th there was information spreading within the camp of the, the Hebrew slaves that their time of deliverance was nigh. And it was Moses that was uh, born to actually achieve that purpose. In other words, my dear friends, Moses was born for the purpose of delivering his people from bondage. That was his purpose. And then you begin to even understand why he had to undergo that uh, miraculous salvation from death because of the work that he had to accomplish. I would like to mention at this point that, you know, when, when, when you have got a purpose, when, when the Lord has got a purpose for you, there are things that will happen in your life that will point to the fact that you've got something special to do. Some of us here have been saved from accidents. Some of us have been saved from, from, from illness, you know, from, from, from death. Uh, we, we've been saved from the coronavirus. We, we've lost our friends. We've, we've lost our, our relatives. But the Lord has preserved us up to this time. Some of us have gone through nasty accidents. People died. But, but, but here we are, still alive. And, 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 and this is because you still have got uh, unfinished work to do for the Lord. So the Lord is keeping you for a purpose. When I read Psalm 118 and, and, and verse 17, the Bible says, I will not die. I will live and declare the works of the Almighty. So the, 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 the reason we are still alive is because Jehovah has got a work for us to do. Let's continue with a few facts about Moses. Now, while Moses was in the while he was in the in, 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 in the courts of, of, of Egypt, while he was being raised as a, as a prince, he became aware of the divine mission that the Lord had put upon him. And so when he was when he was 40 years of age, the, the purpose that was revealed to him by God, you know, it it started affecting him. He, he wanted to see then how he could execute it. And so the Bible mentions that one day, as, as he went around, when he went to visit his people, he found an Egyptian that was uh, persecuting an Israelite. And so moved through the inspiration of the purpose that God had revealed to him, he decided to kill the Egyptian so that he could save the Israelite. But quickly, that was noticed. And uh, it was learned that Moses had killed an Egyptian. And so when you read in Acts chapter 7, verse 23 to 24, Moses escaped and went to Midian. He went to Midian running away from that incident of killing an Egyptian. And you will, you will see that uh, it was very easy for the Egyptians to catch up with Moses, very easy, because this man had, had killed. It was easy to catch up with him and bring him to justice. But you can see that the hand of God was presiding over this man so much that even after he killed, the Lord was still with him because the, 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 the work upon him was still very strong. So God preserves him and he flees to Midian. And when you read Acts 7, verse 30 through 31, the Bible tells us that he only came back to deliver Israel after 40 years. Take note, at the age of 40, he flees to Midian. And you can begin to ask what pro probably could have been happening in the mind of Moses to realize that now he is in Midian when he knows that he's supposed to deliver his people. He's now, he's gone, he's in media, and he only comes back to deliver Israel when he is eight years. The question that begs an answer is, what was happening to Moses during those 40 years in media? What is it that was happening to him? What was going on? What was God doing to him? I would like to propose a few points to you as to what was going on when he was in Midian. Number one, 
Moses was learning to unlearn. He was learning to unlearn. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 248, Ellen White says, Moses had been learning much that he must unlearn. The influences that had surrounded him in Egypt, the love of his foster mother, his own high position as the king's grandson, the dispatch on every hand, the refinement, the, 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 the subtlety, and the mysticism of a false religion. These are the things that Moses was learning to unlearn. God is preparing this man to step into his position. But the position he was called upon to step into was a high and loft one. He needed to unlearn certain things for him to be able to perform with maximum efficiency that which the Lord wanted him to do. And so the Lord allows him to go into Midian, where he must commune with mountains and trees, where he must hear the birds sing, where he must learn, where he must learn to forsake those things that had an impact on him, where he needed to, 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 to forget about the love of his foster mother and his own high position as the king's grandson and the dispatch on every hand. He needed to unlearn the mysticism of a false religion because while he was in Egypt, he had been introduced to the, to, to the religion of Egypt, which was shrouded in you know, mysticism. So he had to unlearn those things. Number two, Moses needed to spend time alone with God. He needed to spend time alone with God. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 248, shut in by the bulwarks of the mountains. Moses was alone with God. Moses seemed to stand in his presence and to be overshadowed by his power. Here, his pride and self-sufficiency were swept away. In the stained simplicity of his wilderness life, the results of the case, uh, the, the results of the ease and luxury of Egypt disappeared. Moses became patient, reverent, and humble. And when you read Numbers 12, verse 3, because of the Midian experience, the Bible says Moses became very meek above all the men which were upon the first of the earth. Yet in a strong in faith in the mighty God of Jacob. So when Moses is alone, he is. He is spending time with God. The Lord has pulled him out to be with him. And this was not just a period of one week. It was not a period of one month. It was not a period of two months. It was not a period of one year. It was a period of 40 years. I want to propose to us, my friends, that we need to spend time with God. Some of us are too busy for the world. We are too busy with, with the things of this world. We can't even hear that, uh, that, that, that voice of Jehovah because we are too busy rushing after money, rushing after our businesses, wanting to click this deal and that deal. And at the end of the day, we don't listen to the voice of God. So the Lord had to call Moses to be with him for 40 years in the uh, you know, wilderness of, of, of Midian so that he could learn to spend time with God. I want to propose to us that uh, it is critical that we spend time with God. We need to spend time with God. Sometimes if you can manage even just an hour with the Lord in the morning, that is sufficient. Time with God is always special time. That's where you learn to be patient. That's where you learn to be reverent. That's where you learn to be humble. All these qualities are important for you to be able to step into your position. You know, when the Lord has given you a work to do, sometimes even when you know that this is, a, this is what I was born for, you may not automatically step into that work because the, 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 there is a preparation that must qualify you for that. And what we are saying is that you need to spend time with God for you to be able to be ready to do your work. And finally, I want to end on, on point number three because tomorrow I'm going to build on point number three. Moses was being trained. He was being trained. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 247. Ellen White says, in the school of self-denial and hardship, 
he was to learn patience to temper his passions. Before he could govern wisely, he must be trained to obey. His own heart must be fully in harmony with God before he could teach the knowledge of his will to Israel. By his own experience, he must be prepared to exercise a fatherly care over all who needed his help. Moses was being trained during those 40 years. Some people may argue and say, Pastor, how could Moses spend all that 40 years in, in Midian, in the bush? That, that is a waste of time. That's a waste of money. Yes, my dear friends, it may appear like that, but the Lord had a special purpose to work through Moses. Moses needed to be trained mightily because the work ahead of him was a mighty work. Before you can step into your work, before you can step into your spiritual gift, before you can step into your purpose, you must be trained. Do you know that it takes long for some people to begin to work according to their spiritual gift because their training requires long. The greater your responsibility, the longer the training. You need to train. And tomorrow we will look at how God trains these people. You'll be, you'll be surprised to learn that there are certain things that God allows to happen in our lives for the sake of us being trained so that we are able to come and step into the position that he has appointed for us because that position is a position of trust. It requires discipline. It requires reverence. It requires humility. It requires faithfulness. And so this morning, we ask a question. Are you willing to unlearn some of your beliefs and practices before God can use you? Are you willing to unlearn some of the things you have espoused as, 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 as your beliefs? Are you, are you willing to unlearn your philosophy so that God may put his own philosophy into you? Do you spend time alone with God? And are you cooperating with God in the training process? Time has come that we need to begin to unlearn some things. Time has come that we begin to spend time alone with God and to cooperate with him. I pray that may it be your desire today to spend time with God. May it be your desire today to cooperate with God. And may you allow God to train you May you allow God to work in you, to will and to do of his pleasure so that you may be an instrument, an effective instrument by which he may be able to do that special work. Your work is very unique. Your purpose in this life is unique. But my friend, you can't step into that purpose before you are qualified and trained to be able to step into it. And I pray that Jehovah bless you this morning as uh, we now prepare to go into the prayers. Allow me to close this session with a word of prayer. Shall we just pray together? Mighty one of Israel, glory and honor be to your name. The God of Moses, the God that was able to separate Moses from the busy noises of Egypt and took him into the silence of Midian, where Lord, he could learn you and he could spend time with you i pray in jesus name that lord help us to spend time with you help us father to cooperate with you help us father to look to you and to receive that training that will sharpen us for us to be able to step into our purpose for existence bless us now as the prayers will begin may you open the windows of heaven May the portal of heaven be open to receive supplications. May burdens be lifted up. May prayers be answered. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.